So this comes with Windows 10 Home. What the luck? Come on, let's get rid of that Windows Home. Let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. You can also get Office 2019. Just paste my code, woof. It's Windows Pro time. Today, I'm gonna to be reviewing this thing, The Beast. The new updated version to one of my all time favorite laptops, the Dell XPS 15. This is the 7590. And if you just look at it, you'll think it looks exactly the same as the last model. Don't be fooled by that because there are a lot of major upgrades to this. We're talking Wi-Fi 6, three new display options, Full HD, OLED, Ultra HD Touch, new CPU, ninth generation CPU, i7, i9, new GPU, GTX 1650. And they've actually done something with the cooling. They've actively called the bit of the VRM and also called the chipset. Now, if you guys are new around here, come on, sub up, join the Woo Train, hit that bell, ding-a-ling-a-dong, and give me a like if you like this sort of video. Now, 15-inch laptops don't get any better than this. This is an ultra-portable 15-inch powerhouse. And yes, I know you gamers with your RTX dongs are laughing at that. But let me tell you something. Out of all the premium 15-inch laptops, gaming or non-gaming, I would take this over any of those gaming thin and lights any day. I mean, have a look at it. Look how beautiful it is. I tell you now, this is one of my favorite laptops to photograph. Even though it shares the design from pretty much 2015, it's still bang up to date because it has that beautiful infinity edge display with minimal bezels. The webcam's even up the top now. So if that's an issue, they've fixed that. CNC machined aluminium. Build quality is top draw. It is pure class. Now with the specs of this model, I actually have two. I have the OLED version and the 4K touch version. Version. Remember, only the Ultra HD LCD panel is touch. The OLED is not touch, neither is the Full HD. But the two models I have here, I'll show the specs up there. One has an i7, one has an i9, and there's a difference in the RAM. Same GPU, of course. And it comes in at the starting weight of 4 pounds and 1.8 kilos. And with the Ultra HD touch, it's 4.5 pounds and 2 kilos. 11 to 17 millimeters. So you don't get much smaller and compact than this when it comes to 15 inch performance laptops. Now they start here in Australia at about 2,200. US is supposed to be 979. I don't know what kind of model you get for that. And in the UK, I said them started around 1,800 pounds. And the models I have, the OLED, about three and a half in Australian, 2,000 in the US, 1,800 pounds. And the i9 fully decked out is 5,200 in Australia. There's something wrong with the conversion there. 2,600 in the US and about 2,500 pounds. Now, if you compare that to the MacBook Pro, very good value. Can be up to $1,000 cheaper if you sort of get that same sort of spec, one terabyte, 32 gigs, you know, sort of maxing it out there. So it is great value. And some people tell me, should I spend the extra on the X1 Extreme? And I'm like, that costs more? I would pay more for the XPS. And at the end of the video, I'll be answering a lot of questions that I have received and telling you why you would buy this over some other laptops. Of course, I could probably make a video saying why you buy them over this, but this is the XPS review, of course. And it's important to me that my reviews are for just normal people that don't understand what wattage is and undervolt and all that. That's what my other videos are for. I've got a playlist with all the performance testing. So check that out if you're more technically minded. For ports, we have a four lane Thunderbolt 3 with power delivery and yes you can charge through that and it charges exactly the same speed as the power adapter like just over two hours to charge it has two usb 3.1 gen ones one hdmi 2.0 combination audio jack and a full-size sd card reader i cannot tell you how much of a joy it is to have an sd card reader again oh my god so good and of course the power jack there when it comes to the sound i think they have actually improved the sound it's still not in the class of the macbook pro if you're listening to sort of like more compressed audio at higher ends of the volume you will get distortions but it does have a nice clarity to it it's good for watching movies and stuff but overall i'll give it about a 7 out of 10 for sound it's probably the weakest point of this laptop and if 7 out of 10 is your weakest point that's pretty good when it comes to the keyboard love the keyboard going from a macbook pro to this keyboard it is so nice having a bit of travel there it's backlit it's not full size it doesn't have a number pad but i like it because it centers the keyboard the only criticism i have is that the keys are a little small but i'm a big man with big things so might not be an issue for you trackpad pretty much the best windows trackpad only microsoft probably make trackpads as good as the xps line not as good as the mac it's a solid 8 out of 10. I can actually video edit with this trackpad, so that is good. Glass, nice and smooth. Windows Precision, 
just just work well it is really good now when it comes to displays you have three display options full hd 4k oled and lcd 4k touch now if you want the killer battery life like 15 16 hours battery life you get the full hd 500 nits brightness that is but let me tell you the battery life on the 4k versions is really good you're going to get all day battery life with either of them like i'm talking eight hours plus so i see no reason to get the full hd because you get such good battery life now if you want touch only the ultra hd lcd has the touch the OLED does not have touch, neither does the Full HD. Considering I have both panels, I put up the specs there from my measurements. The color perimeter actually thought that the Ultra HD touch was actually 700 nits. And that's because of the hot whites it has. It has really pure hot whites, maybe a bit of clip in there. But overall, it's 500 nits, 2.2 gamma, 100% Adobe RGB, and around 94% DCI P3. With the OLED, and this is like a rounded off average of a lot of measurements, it's 100% DCI P3, 93% Adobe RGB, and gamma 2.6. Now, of course, the gamma is different between DCI P3 and 100% Adobe RGB. Which one should you choose? Good luck there, because I cannot even make a decision. Dell made the decision for me by only having having the i9 with the LCD so that's what I got I'm happy with it although I'll just as equally be happy with the OLED as well these screens are friggin amazing they are stunning I have a video dedicated to these displays check that out they are top class probably the best displays I've seen on laptops at the moment some notes are that the OLED really deep blacks when I calibrated it tried to make the blacks less black if you know what I mean and the LCD hot whites and I actually tried to dull down those whites when I calibrated. So I would say good luck choosing between the two. If you don't know, 100% Adobe RGB is more for photographers and print. DCI P3 is more for video editors. I think it's got more greens in it and Adobe RGB has got more reds. The color gamut's so wide on both of them, you could use either photography or video use. So don't worry about that. Now I always check for light bleed and stuff like that, but I don't like to publish my findings unless Unless there's something really wrong with it or out of the ordinary just because it's a sample size of one and it means nothing but because this OLED is a new technology I thought I'll publish my findings and what I found is of course backlight bleed is not an issue with OLED but to put a 33% grey what I could see is sort of like a white sort of patch in the middle that sort of goes top to bottom that's just panel uniformity could I see it in real life no never saw it in real life also you can see here that it does have PWM flickering. So although OLED doesn't emit as much blue light as LCD, so usually it's better on the eyes, if you're sensitive to PWM flickering, maybe the OLED's not for you. And again, you cannot see this in real life. Like you can't see it, but just yeah, through this camera you can at a certain shutter speed. So all in all, fantastic displays, love them. So when it comes to battery life, first things first, it does support connected standby, but I had a mixed bag. Sometimes I'll close the lid, I'll come back hours later, and it would only use a few percent of the battery. Works how it should do. Once I closed it, opened it up, and it was just draining the battery. So the connected standby to sleep issues that other XPSs have had still present at the moment. Hopefully that's fixed with BIOS. The battery life on these is friggin' amazing. I could not believe it. Over 10 hour battery runs on both of them streaming youtube 10 hours it's about 40 percent brightness when it comes to normal use i just hand these over to my wifey she uses word excel powerpoint web surfing a bit of videos just give it to her then i'll work out from that usage what's going on and i can say even with the oled you're going to get over eight hours battery life and my wife does have the display pretty bright so both of them will have all day battery life so far i'm not seeing a big difference between the two now I have calibrated the battery on the OLED so I'm getting bigger capacity compared to the LCD touch one which I haven't calibrated yet so it has less battery capacity but overall 10 hours video runs no problems you're going to get over 8 hours both of them normal use productivity amazing battery life on both so I wouldn't be concerned either way I mean the LCD is supposed to have better battery life but to be honest in my testing not much difference at all when it comes to performance go check out all my performance videos under vaulting gaming content creation but to sum it up this is a powerhouse and it performs like a powerhouse you're able to do all your after effects content creation photoshop lightroom premiere whatever your poison is this can do the job you have the option of the i9 and the i7 go check out my review i9 versus i7 i think both of them are great the i9 is exceptional it really is 
especially when you undervolt it and overclock it. If you can get to the i9, certainly get to it, but don't skimp on the screen. I would rather have an i7 and a 4K display rather than an i9 and a Full HD. For gaming, you're going to be playing 60 frames per second, medium, high settings, more towards the high settings. It was getting well in excess of 60 frames per second most of the games. So yeah, I would probably play 60 frames per second high myself. It's not a gaming laptop. If you want a gaming laptop, do not buy this. Still games like a champ. You know, temperatures, yeah, the CPU goes up to 100. GPU can go up to 78 degrees. It's not that loud. Compared to gaming laptops, it's not that loud. It's pretty much comparable with the MacBook Pro in terms of loudness. You won't hear the fans, Netflix, streaming 4K video. The only time you'll hear the fans is when you push it. So noise isn't an issue. External heat really isn't an issue. It gets warm underneath and when you're charging on the left side of the keyboard, but nothing like gaming laptops is actually good in that regard. Now there has been some issues where the GPU won't engage or it'll switch to the Intel HD GPU. That'll all be fixed in BIOS updates. I'm pretty confident about that. I'll talk more about that at the end. DPC latency, I actually thought it was an issue. Out of the box, it wasn't. I tested DPC latency, it was fine, but I thought it was OBS that was messing it up. Actually, Steve from Own and Disowned actually told me it's the NVIDIA drivers, and it's true. I rolled back and it was fine. DPC latency was fine. You know when Apple say that we need to control the drivers, that's why we're not going to use NVIDIA because we want to give you a great experience? Well, it's probably true because NVIDIA are stuffing up the DPC latency on pretty much every PC if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. Steve from Only Design doesn't even test DPC latency anymore because NVIDIA drivers stuff it up. So out of the box, it was perfectly fine. When I updated the NVIDIA driver, yeah, the DPC latency increased. So if you're coming from the Mac or whatever, that's Windows laptops with NVIDIA drivers. It can be hit and miss in terms of that. Also, that Wi-Fi 6 is friggin' amazing. Never had one issue with it. The range is really good. At the back, I was still getting good transfer speeds. And I tell you what, I nearly got up to 80 megabytes per second transfers with the Wi-Fi 6, okay? And that was over an AC client. I can imagine you might be able to get over 80 if you had an AX client, so a Wi-Fi 6 router. So Wi-Fi 6, it's no joke. You get better battery life with it because those streaming numbers, like I reckon that's the Wi-Fi 6 is given those like 10 hour plus streaming runs. It's amazing. Lower latency and usually with killer, I like hold my head and go, no, not a killer Wi-Fi, but this one's solid so far. So what cons does it have? Obviously the issue where it's not engaging the GPU, that needs to be fixed in BIOS. Dell, you need to fix that quickly. I'm confident they will. I don't have an issue with that. The DPC latency, they've got to work with Nvidia to fix this sort of thing, right? Out of the box, it's fine, but I can't guarantee it will be fine, especially when you update the Nvidia driver. Would have liked to see more done with the cooling, but that being said, there's nothing really here to hold me back with that 130 watt power unit. It does a great job for that sort of thermal package. If you're coming from a Mac, I recommend you hold off at the moment. If you're not comfortable updating drivers and biases and stuff like that, I'd wait maybe three months and then buy it. Then all the drivers will be up to date. It will be rock solid. If you're a PC guy, you're probably used to that. One of the great things about being a PC user is they bring out the latest hardware as soon as it comes out. But that also has a downside too because... The drivers aren't 100% there. The BIOS isn't 100% there. So you have to wait a few months down the track before it comes super rock solid. That being said, it has Dell Updater. It does it all for you. You don't have to worry about it. So maybe it's really not an issue at all. But just know now, it's just had those previous issues that I've mentioned. Now, why would I buy this over a MacBook Pro or an X1 Extreme, which I think are the main competitors? I don't compare this to any other gaming laptop. Maybe the Aero 15 is the only one you could sort of compare here. But in terms of a MacBook Pro, it's much better value. You can upgrade it, more display options. There are less issues with this, even brand new straight out of the box. I mean, with the Mac, it's not a matter of if your keyboard fails, it's a matter of when. And Apple just treat it as a minor issue. They oh, it's just a minor problem, the keyboard. The keyboard's so important. There's a lot of other issues with T2 and stuff like that. When it comes to the X1 Extreme, believe it or not, I actually own that for a few months. And yes, it raised the bar in terms of keyboard. It's super tough. It'll take the bash and crash of everyday use. It has two M.2s, it has two Thunderbolts. I actually prefer the port situation on the X1 Extreme and that's another reason you'd get the XPS 2 over the MacBook Pro, more ports, better port selection with the SD card reader. But the reason I sold the X1 and I'd rather have the XPS 15 is 
very conservative with the performance. It's a bit more thermally limited than the XPS 15. The calibration out of the factory is not even close to what it should be. Calibrated up, the display is fine, but yeah, way out of whack of what I expect on such an expensive laptop. It also doesn't have the battery life of the XPS 15. So that's my reasons I'll get the XPS 15. And this is still the one to beat, I think. These ones are still the one to beat. So in conclusion, Class leading displays, class leading battery life. I reckon one of the best looking laptops on the market. Powerhouse does everything you need from gaming to content creation. This thing is amazing and I highly recommend it. Yes, yes, you know what time it is. XPS 15, baby. You love it. Woo!